So I, I want to talk about surviving uh, singleness during cuffing season. Surviving singleness during cuffing season. Uh, I think I would be doing a, bis a big disservice if I did not uh, qualify or define what in the world is singleness. All right? So singleness simply just means that you're not married. I know that's like, wow. But singleness means that you are not married. And I think our society uh, has made it so complicated. Uh, we are working through some things. No, baby, you single. Uh, you know, uh, we, we've been together for this. You single, amen. Uh, we're trying to be our best selves first. You single. It's okay, you're single, right? If you fill out that paperwork, you're not going to check the box that says Mary. You're going to check the box that says single. Amen. Come on, somebody. That, that is singles. Uh, but I think one of the most important things to know is that there is not just one type of single. I think the church is really good uh, of seeing single people and automatically assuming things about them. So I kind of want to give us four uh, types of singles, and then we're going to end with the fifth one today. So the first one, if you're taking notes, if you're listening, uh, those are the people who are single and satisfied. Right. Amen. Th these are the folks uh, who say, I, I don't need no man, I don't need no woman, just Jesus alone. <laughs> you know, all of that, right? Right, you're single and satisfied. Maybe uh, you had already had some type of relationship before and you said, I'm good on that. I can do better with just Jesus alone. All right, that's single and satisfied. The next one, and maybe some people in here, maybe some people online are there. You're single and you're ready to mingle. All right, so what is that? That means that you are actively dating. Maybe you swiping through a couple of apps. Maybe uh, you're asking folks, hey, do you got a brother? Hey, do you got a sister, right? You're single and you're ready to mingle. Here's the third one. You're single and you're free. So these are the types of folks who say uh, that I'm, I, I'm here for a fun time, not for a long time. Come on, somebody. S somebody laughed a little too hard at that. Come on, somebody. So, so you have single and you have free. But then you have some folks that I want to give us a little attention to who are single and painfully aware. Uh, you're talking about folks who every time you turn around, their parents are saying, I'm waiting for a grandbaby. I'm talking about the ones every time Thanksgiving and Christmas comes around, they say, you still ain't got nobody yet? Come on, somebody. When you're looking around, everybody booed up on social media, and you're like, dang, where, where, where is mine at, right? They have the desire to be mingling, but for one reason or another, it just doesn't work out. And depending upon who you talk to, they will say that the whole point of being single is to one day be married. But I want us to just take a little look at that. Newsflash, less and less people are actually desiring to be married. Let's take a look at some, at some statistics, if we will. When we look at the generation, the mature saints, right, our, our, our mothers of the church, our fathers of the church, 65% of them married. Then if we go to the baby boomers, it is said that 48% of them married. Baby boomers, are y'all in the house? That's a lot of y'all, amen. <laughs> Our Gen X, where's Gen X in the house? All right, Gen X, it says that 36% of Gen Xers have married or have desired to be married. But millennials, do we have any millennials that's in the house? Amen. They in here maybe. I think we got some millennials certainly watching online. It says that millennials are 26% likely to be married. 26%. That's nothing. Over a little of the quarter of the millennial population has a desire or is married. 
with 26% of millennials who desire marriage, that surely can present a difficulty for those singers, for those singles who have that desire. So let's go in, let's look at a little text. Uh, I really think it's going to help us out a little bit. Flow with me, and, and I think God is going to do something. Let's go to the 17th Psalm. Let's go to the 17th Psalm. Psalm 17. Amen. And David is the writer of this psalm. And in this psalm, David is praying to God. The 17th Psalm is powerful because it is a prayer of divine interposition. What does this mean? How does it relate? Well, I'm just so glad that you asked. David is literally in this psalm praying earnestly to God that God would get in the midst of his situation. Is there anybody that's ever been there before? And so throughout this psalm, David begins to repeat a, a familiar refrain. And in some form, it says, God, hear my prayer. He says, God, hear my prayer. And so every time he says some variation of Here's my uh, hear my prayer, what he's literally saying is, God, I need you to get in the midst of my situation. God, I need you to get in the middle of where I currently am. And so somebody, I think we ought to change up the title of this message. Somebody help me announce my new title. Shout it from to somebody on your row and just say, hear my prayer. Come on, say it again. Say, hear my prayer. Yeah, yeah, somebody in the comment section say, hear my prayer. Is there anybody, can I just pause right here? Is there anybody who wants God to get in the middle of their plans? Come on, somebody. Is there anybody that wants God, matter of fact, not just to get in the middle of their plans, but to just wreck their plans? So in other words, God, if what I'm desiring is not what you're desiring for me, I want you to wreck it. God, if who I want is not who you want for me, I want you to wreck it. God, if the places that I'm trying to go is not the places that you want for me, I want you to wreck it. In other words, our new declaration ought to be, God, hear my prayer. I'm talking to some single person today. I'm talking to some single person that's watching me online. You don't even know it, but you have been invoking the power of Psalm 17. Uh, when you thought that you met that person, your person, and then you prayed and something happened, that's because you invited God to intervene. He looked at what was going on and saw that that won't it. And because he knows you and knows that you give too many chances and because he knows that you would try to act blind to the red flags that you see and because God wants the best for you before he allowed them to wreck your life, God wrecked your plans. See, I know that it hurt you, but I want to tell you God helped you. And you know that you are in a new place when you can praise God for that what ended and for what didn't work. Okay, okay, now I need a church. Y'all been a little too quiet. Y'all been a little too chill. Is there anybody that can praise God for the things that didn't happen? Is there anybody that can praise God for the things that didn't work? Is there anybody that can praise God for the job that laid you off? Is there anybody that can praise God for the people who left you high and dry? Somebody ought to just take 10 seconds right here and praise God for what? Ah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm trying to keep my composure. I'm trying to, but you just ought to really just begin to think about it. Uh, you ought to have a flashback, not on the pleasure of your sneaky link, but you ought to have a flashback of the toxicity of who God delivered you from. Ooh, Jesus. Something that I need you to know is this, and something I need you to know is this, is that God adds to bless you. God subtracts 
to protect you. Somebody missed it, I'm going to say it again. God adds to bless you. God, uh, God subtracts to protect you. So listen, you cried at the subtraction when you should have been rejoicing. God, y'all, y'all, don't y'all know that God has a track record of ending things to produce life? Yeah, yeah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He ended the life of his son so that we might have an everlasting life. God has a track record of using heartbreak to push you into your next season. And you can tell where God is getting ready to take you based off of the people who are, you are around. If you see new people, you're, you're probably in a new season. If you see people begin to leave, you're probably getting ready to enter into a new season. Don't cry over who's leaving, but rather you just ought to rejoice. So somebody don't want to hit you back, you just better rejoice. Somebody don't want to pick up the phone for you, you better rejoice because you didn't know it, but God was protecting you for something that was coming down the pipe. Look at Psalm 17 and 8, if you will. I'm really almost done. Psalm 17 and 8. Here's what it says. David is praying his prayer. He has been saying, hear me, oh God, hear my prayer. Hear my plea, hear my petition. And in 17 and 8, he goes as far as to say, he says, keep me as the apple of your eye. Then he says, hide me in the shadow of your wings. Can I just say that one more time for me? He said, keep me. It's the apple of my eye and hide me under the shadow of my wings. I want y'all to know that that term, the apple of the eye, uh, rather in translation in the Hebrew, here goes your only deep theological thought today. Uh, apple means ishan, which is related to the word ish, <laughs> meaning man. Uh, and so rather the ishan of the eye means the little man of the eye. In other words, have you ever looked at somebody in the eye and you saw your own reflection in their pupil? That right there is the little man. That right there is the apple of the eye. And so the apple of the eye is one's very sensitive place and therefore it needs to be very protective. Won't you just take a moment and think about your own eye, no matter how good or how bad it might be, for just a moment. What happens if something flies in it or towards it? Automatically through your reflex, it begins to close. Your head turns and your hands position themselves to ward off the threat. So when David is saying, God, Keep me as the apple of your eye. What he is really saying is at all costs, God, I need you to keep me protected. God is saying when any time a threat comes near, I need you to push it off. What David is saying, God, anytime things come near your eye that will cause you harm, every time you blink, I'm going to be protected. And I just believe that there's somebody in this place, there's somebody that's watching me online who knows that every time you God blinks, you're going to be protected. The reason why you're still here today is because God protected you. The reason why you are as good good as you are today is because God protected you. The reason why you are as whole as you are today is because God protected you. I know we praise them for houses and cars and money and land, but is there anybody that can praise God for his protection? Come on, that sound a little weak. That sound a little cute, but I said, can you praise God for his protection in your life? You should have been dead sleeping in your grave, but his protection covered you. You should have been taken out when you were going places that you had no business going, but his protection covered you. You should have caught an STD or something. 
you. Y'all don't want to be real, but you ought to thank God for his protection. Watch. Watch this, singles. I really want to pray over you really quickly. People who really are in some other situations, I want to first pray over you for three things. I want to pray over you physically. Can I do that? Somebody, if you're not single, I need you to get the, the, the name of a single person you know. I need you to get the name of someone who you want God to bless with their significant other. And let's just begin to pray for them. Are you ready? So here's our first prayer uh, for the protection of their physicality. I rebuke any form of domestic violence that would try to creep into your relationship. I pray for those singles even now in the name of Jesus that you won't let heartbreak uh, begin to impact your physicality. I pray that God would keep you well. Now, if you believe that for that single person or yourself, just begin to give God some praise right here. Here we go. I'm praying spiritually. I pray that against spiritual sabotage that would try to enter into your life. I pray against people and situations that would come to rob you of your destiny and dethrone you from being seated in heavenly places with God. Now come on, if you believe that for yourself or whoever you're thinking of, just begin to give God praise. Here's the last thing. I want to pray for your emotions. I rebuke roller coasters of emotion that come in the form of unresolved issues, unable and unwillingness to commit, from secrets and lies, from manipulation and deception. I take a moment and I pray for your emotional stability, that you would know who is for you after just a couple conversations. I pray in the name of Jesus that he would sharpen up your discernment so that you know who is for you and who is not. I pray that God would keep your emotions intact and if you believe that one more time let's praise God for the emotions singles I want you to hear how special you are even somebody else you're not single I want you to hear how special you are you indeed are the apple of God's eye and it is God's desire that you are protected that's just not physically, spiritually, but that's emotionally too. It is also God's desire that you know your value. Can I be real? You are more than your sexual performance. Y'all don't like that type of talk. You are more than your sexual performance. You are more than how deep your wallet can go. Come on, somebody. You ain't going to take up all my money. The devil is a liar. <laughs> right? You, you, you are more than what people tell you that you are, but you are a child of God. You are a king's kid, as they would say. Come on, somebody. You are covered under the protection of God. Listen, Psalm 17, David had a plea. He said, and you, you can play soft now. David had a plea. He said, God, I need you to hear my prayer. God, I need you to get in the midst of my situation. I need you to get in the midst of my dating life. I need you to get in the midst of what I decide to do. But today, I've got a confession for you. And that confession is, and you ought to make it your confession, I won't allow others to treat me less than the way that my God sees me. I'm preaching already. I won't allow others to treat me less than the way that my God sees me. My God sees me as the head. <laughs> and not to tell. God, my God sees me as a conqueror. My God sees me as victorious. My God sees me as 
an overcomer. Don't allow anybody to treat you less in the way that God sees you. And every day, I'm telling you, your, your value is increasing. Fat Joe said it best. Yesterday's price, y'all don't know about that. It's not today's price. Y'all yeah, 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 y'all don't understand. He said, yesterday's price is not today's price. In other words, you can't treat me one day yesterday, then come back today and think you're going to be able to do the same thing. Yesterday's price is not today's price because I understand who I am. I understand where my value is. I understand that I am God's. And because I am God's possession, you ain't going to treat me any type of way. Is there anybody that says, I might not have a it all together but I've got my dignity I might not have it all together but I know my identity in God I might not have it all together but I know that he loves me and since God loves me I'm not going to let anybody just come in and do what they want to do to me I'm talking to the singles but I'm talking to everybody <laughs> How many of you know that you're valuable, you're special? Not just special in the bed. Not just special when folks can pimp you and get what they want out of you, but you're special because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the creation of God. When God saw you, he had a little tear come down his eye and he said, girl, you look good, boy. You look sharp. Is there anybody that can praise God because you know you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Come on, just encourage yourself for a moment. Just encourage yourself for a moment. Just build yourself up for a moment and just begin to say, I'm good how I am. I'm good how he made me. Girl, you look good. Girl, you look fine. Boy, you're doing all right. You're doing better than what you think you're doing. Somebody build yourself up for a moment. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Such a Sunday morning. Oh, magnify. <laughs> the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together I will say of the Lord he is my refuge he is my shelter he is my fortress he is my protection every time God blinks he protects me somebody just ought to start blinking every time God bleeds. He protects me because I am. You are. I am. You are the apple of his eye. Praise him because you are protected. You're protected. You're protected. Somebody in the comments just say, I'm protected. I'm protected. I'm protected. I'm protected. Everybody can't praise off of that. But until you've been in a situation where you are vulnerable, can you praise God for his protection? Somebody praise him because you're protected. Hallelujah. 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 Watch this. I talked about, come down for me just a little bit. I talked about four different types of singles. But the last type of singles that I want to encourage you to be, I want to encourage whoever you're going to go tell this message to, to be is to be single and waiting. <laughs> I want you to be single and waiting. 
posture, there is a posture of waiting. We hear it all the time when they say, oh, you know, serve the Lord, right? Serving the Lord is actually doing things. In your waiting, here's what I want you to do. You need to work on yourself. Don't lose no weight for, so, for some girl. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, hello. Don't lose no weight for no man. You better lose weight so you don't got the sugars and heart pressure and all that stuff. Y'all... Y'all laughing, but I'm serious. Come on, somebody. You better lose weight so you can look good, so you can look at the mirror and say, look at you, you're sharp, you're bad. Just go with your bad self. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You need to get your money up. Y'all yeah, don't want to hear that. Yeah, God will supply all your needs, but stop spending all your money. You need to get some investments. Come on, somebody. You need to get a 401k. Come on, somebody. You're single and you're waiting. You need to get some good friends that can hold you accountable and not just use you up and drain all your energy. Single and waiting. You need to build up your relationship with God. Woo. Because I tell you, if you talk to God, God will talk to you. Come on, somebody. If you put God first, God will show you where to go. God will show you who to get connected and who to get hooked up with. You're single and you're waiting. I wait. Sometimes the wait get long, but I wait. You <laughs> Come on. So I said sometimes the wait get long, but I wait. I ain't going to settle neither. Come on, somebody. Come on. Because yesterday price, y'all not with me. Hey, today, price. So for those who are here, know yourself, love yourself, but love the God that gave you yourself. That's all I got for you today.